this was, this proof, this result here, was actually only the first part of the proof. And um, I didn't finish off the second part. What they wanted was, this is kind of like, I don't think they had labels, but if this is part one. Part two, so it was not that they wanted you to prove something, but they wanted you to find another expression for I n. Okay? Importantly, they wanted it to account for n equals zero. This one only accounts for n equals one, and so on. Okay? You can sort of see that it can't account for um, n equals zero because it'll have i of negative one in there, and then you kind of think, well, it's going to actually follow some different rules. If what you've got here is, what would that be? That'd be x over one minus x cubed, and then so on and so on. Okay? So the recurrence relation that we got only works for, is only true for um, values of n greater than or equal to 1, right? So they want something. They sort of want to get away from the recurrence relation. They want to use this, but get some other kind of expression that doesn't depend on this, and therefore isn't bounded by this. They want some kind of expression that will hold even, including 0, OK? Now, heads up. Did anyone get this one? Did anyone get there? Anyone have a look at it? Morning, sure. Grab a seat. Take it. I'll just shut the door. Even you, Max? Did you get it? Oh, yes. I'm just, my brain is just ticking over at the moment. Okay, so here's the way that I would think about this, right? Do you remember, are you see, it's the cogs are turning. Um, think back to when you've got just regular integration by parts, okay? And we, uh, we looked at questions like this. Uh, we would use recurrence relations for something like, oh, I don't know, let's do, let's do zero to pi on, something like this. Okay. So what we did was we saw that if we took the case of sine x all to the n, sine nx, right, you can get your recurrence relation. You know, if we call this i5, then there'd be an i4 in it, and then an i3, and an i2, and an i1. Eventually, you'd get to some point where you don't need to worry about a recurrence relation anymore. You could evaluate, you know, say i i1. You could do right the integral of sine x to the power of one from naught to pi of two. That's fine. We don't need any fancy identities for that. We can just evaluate it, right? So the idea here is we're going to take the same principle. We want to go all the way using this identity until we get down to something where we don't need to use the recurrence relation anymore and we can just say what it is. Okay. So here's the way we're going to unpack it. This is I n. Right. Um, here's, my, here's my method. I'm going to think of the recurrence relation kind of like a, um, kind of like a ladder. I want to step down to it. Okay. So from this step, I can go to the previous step and know what that's like. I can know what i n minus 1 is because it should follow the same pattern that i n is, right? So in this case, everywhere I see n here, I'm going to stick in an n minus 1, right? So let, let's see what happens, okay? You're going to get 3 n minus 1 over 3 n minus 1 plus 2 i, and now since I'm looking at the previous one, I'll be, what's the recurrence relation going to look at for this? n minus 2 over here, right? Okay. Hmm. Now I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit for reasons that will become clear shortly. I'm just going to leave the numerator as it is. I don't gain much out of expanding him. But this guy down the bottom, I, I don't want to get rid of that two and make it a little simpler. Three n minus one brackets. That's three n minus three, isn't it? So three n minus three plus two. What's that? Three n minus one. Yes. That looks all right. And then you've got your i n minus 2 <coughs> hanging over on the side. OK, no problems. Let's keep going down the ladder. right? So the next one will be i n minus 2. OK, well, the pattern continues. A lot of it just stays the same. <coughs> this is going to be n minus 2 right? um, over. Now, what's going to happen? Every time I go down, uh, this thing, the denominator, is actually, as I consider each step down the ladder, they're related to each other, right? This term and this term, and this term, what kind of a sequence do they form? Come on, think two unit. The difference between this and this is negative three. Of course it's negative three, because I have minus one in here, and there's times three, right? So this is going to be negative three again. This is an AP, isn't it? Very simple stuff, okay? So therefore, rather than write the expansion, I'm just going to say, clearly, that must be three and minus four, right? Because you're going to go three, and then three again, and so on. And of course, you need to look at the next step on the ladder. All right. Good. So I've got three steps. The top step, 
the next one down, and the next one down after that. I think that's kind of enough here. You know, you always know three steps is kind of enough to see a pattern, establish whether something's an AP or a GP, or see what's going on here. Now I want to go all the way down, skip a whole bunch of steps. I want to start getting toward the part of the recurrence relation that I can actually evaluate and not have to keep on going down the ladder. I want to get off the ladder, right? So let's see, I need, um, I want about three. So let's go, let's go to I3. So I've skipped a whole bunch of intermediate steps on the ladder, right? Because I've assumed they're going to fit all in the same way that these have, okay? What does I3 look like? What are the actual numbers? Because I can evaluate this now, right? On the top you'll have nine. I'm just going to write that as three times three for the same reason I did before. What's on the bottom? Nine plus two, that's 11, isn't it? 11. Times I, and now I can I can see the end of the ladder. It's coming, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need it. You can evaluate them. You don't need to wait for me. What's I2 and I1 and I0 going to be? I2. Okay. That's going to be 3 times 2 on... What's on the denominator? They're always 3 less, aren't they? 11 and then 8. You can see what the next one will be. I1. Okay. Now, at this point, I could sort of, I could evaluate this, couldn't I? I1. Think about what I1 looks like. You can evaluate. That's just a polynomial, isn't it? It's a simple one too. But we want this to include I0. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to see what happens when I go all the way down. I1, that's equal to, according to the recurrence relation, it'll be 3 times 1 on 5 times I0. Okay. And once you get here, for I0, you can't use the recurrence relation anymore. That was kind of the point of this, right? So therefore, I'm just going to evaluate it like from the integral, from what I n is. Okay? So I0 is, from 0 to 1, x, 1 minus x cubed to the power of 0, because it's I0. <coughs> there you go. So that's 1. This is just x squared on 2, isn't it? Yeah. You evaluate it, that's a half. Okay, now, go all the way back to the top of the ladder, right? The top rung says it's this times the next rung. Well, what's the next rung look like? Well, it's this times the next rung. And what that, what's that look like? It looks like this times, and so on, all the way until here. And after that, I don't have to multiply by anything else, right? Because that's I0, it stops. So therefore, I can say I n is equal to, right? Well, I'll start with. I'll start with this, 3n on 3n plus 2. Now instead of writing the next rung, I'm going to say, I'm going to actually put in what I worked out the next rung was. It's 3 times n minus 1 on, what I get? 3n minus 1 times, now I could say the next rung, but I've already worked out what part of the next rung, so I'm going to keep going. Okay, 3n minus 2 on 3n minus 4. Okay. Now, at this point in going down the ladder, I said, look, all the steps are going to keep on going. I'm just going to say they'll all follow the same pattern. And then I thought about what happens just as I'm getting off. Okay, what have I got? I got 3 times 3 on 11, 3 times 2 on 8, 3 times 1 on 5, and then I've got I0 hanging off on the end, right? Which is a half. Okay, now. Admittedly, this looks pretty awful, right? It looks terrible. However, the strength of this is that it doesn't depend on a recurrence relation anymore. We've gotten rid of all of the recurrence, right? I've gone down all the way to I0. So I can actually um, say that this statement is true even for values of n that include 0. Okay. Now have a look at this though. Um, this is quite, there's a lot of sort of symmetry to this, isn't it? There's lots of things that we can take out. For instance, Every single one of these terms, except for that one, has a 3 in it, right? Every single one except the last one. How many terms are there? Excluding the half, the I0, how many are there? Well, I, I can count, right? I've got 1 here, 2 here, 3, some number. I've got n minus 2, n minus 1. I've got n of them, right? n3s, all being multiplied together. So I take that to be 3 to the power of n, right? Okay, once you factor out all of the 3s, there are a lot of them, right? What do you end up with on the top? You've got n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, times whatever the next will be, times 3, times 2, times 1. We have a name for this. It's n factorial. 
Okay, that's kind of nice. Your whole numerator collapses down into that. Okay, so that's it simplified tremendously. Now you have a look at the bottom. Unfortunately, because of this, um, which what's causing the problem? What's causing the problem is this guy. That plus two kind of throws a bit of a spanner in the works, right? What you've got here, I mean, it's an it's an AP, right? Uh, but the, the terms, it's an arithmetic progression, but it's not an arithmetic series. You're not adding up the terms. So I can't use some kind of formula to just simply evaluate that. It's a product, not a sum, isn't it? And because the gap of three in between each one is um, offset by two, I can't use simple factorial notation to just sort of simplify it out. So there are some finicky ways to um, simplify it, but really it's enough just to say, well, this is this product that I've got, and it follows this pattern all the way down to your last three terms will be enough. There you go. So what is this? This is an expression for i n, which we've used the recurrence relation and we've used it till it ran out, which is why it doesn't have any recurrence relation in it anymore. And I'm sure enough you can stick zero into all of that. Zero factorial is one, three to the zero is one, and um, you'll get, well, what would be the first term? It'd be two, wouldn't it? So you'd get a half, which makes sense because we already know that i naught is a half. Okay. So let me just review. What did we do? Okay. You have to do all the work to end up with this recurrence relation. But recurrence relations will not be able to work for zero because they're depending on some previous term. If this recurrence relation, for instance, if it had like an n minus 2 in it, then it wouldn't even work for n equals 1. Right? Because then if you had n equals 1 in there, you'd have a negative 1, and it'd throw out the power, and you'd end up with a different kind of integral. Right? So all recurrence relations end somewhere. Right? But we can use all the recurrence relations so that it, we can get to the bottom. Okay? You have to evaluate these terms so you can see where the, where the whole ladder looks like, uh, where you get rid of all of the terms until you can get an actual value at the end.